Why hello there, this is my hand, and this right here is my new benchmarking system. And this has been due to a bunch of your guys' comments wanting to know what is my benchmarking system. And normally, in the past, my benchmarking system has been whatever system I could throw my card into and I thought it was a good fit for whatever card I was testing. However, now I actually have a dedicated benchmarking system and this is the benchmarking rig we will be using for basically every single graphics card we will be testing. It's not the best benchmarking system in the world, however, we're not going to be benchmarking 1060s, 1070s, 1080s, 480s, or even Vega cards. We're not going to be benchmarking anything really high-end, so this computer right here will do just fine for that. And pardon me as I scooch this so you can see inside of it. Take the side off. And inside, you'll see we have room for full slot graphics cards, which is the whole reason I got this particular case. Uh, another thing you'll notice is there is a liquid cooler in here, and that's because the CPU that's underneath here is overclocked quite high actually. Speaking of which, why don't we talk about the CPU? Um, first, let's talk about the motherboard because the motherboard is an H55 by MSI, capable of overclocking, of course. We have eight gigabytes of 1033 system RAM. I would put in faster, in fact, I am planning on putting in faster RAM at some point in time, but right now I yeah, I don't really have the money, so. Anyhow, the CPU that's underneath here is a Xeon X3460 clocked at 2.8 gigahertz. It is a quad core with hyper threading, meaning it has eight distinct threads, which means it's like an i7. However, we have it clocked from its 2.8 gigahertz to a little bit north of four gigahertz. So we added a good solid 1.2 plus gigahertz to this CPU, thanks to the cooler right here. And if you'll notice, there is a graphics card in it right now. This is just because I am testing this for my next graphics card video, and the more astute among you will know which graphics card I will be testing. I'm not going to tell it to you. I'm not going to spoil it. But uh, some of you might recognize this from my 1,111 subscriber special. I mentioned it there. Anyhow, it also has a 500 gigabyte, 7200 RPM hard drive. Nothing special there. And it has a 1,000 watt power supply and one of the power pins for a graphics card I was testing, but uh, whatever. Yeah, the cable management is not great, but I usually run the computer with the case side off, so cooling is not an issue at all in any way whatsoever. Even for this passively cooled card, that thing is really cool, actually, because there's really good airflow. It just sucks it in through the front, blows it out the back, sucks it in through the top, blows it out the back, so really good airflow here. Anyhow, that is the benchmarking rig that I will be using for basically all of my upcoming graphics tests for the foreseeable future until my main editing rig gets an upgrade and then I'll probably use that. But to be perfectly honest, this computer is actually better at gaming than my main editing rig. It has a faster single threaded performance but not multi-threaded. So that is that. Let's go into Windows and take a little closer look, maybe uh, benchmark it a little bit, and then yeah, I think that'll be it. So thank you folks, see you in Windows. All right, so here we are in Windows, and we have Cinebench R15 open, CPU Z open, and open hardware monitor as well. And in Cinebench, you can see I have a number of different overclocks used for the benches, but the overclock I'm going to be using for most of my benchmarks of graphics cards is going to be around the 4.02 to 4.03 gigahertz benchmark. I found it's the most stable on this particular motherboard as this motherboard is not great for overclocking. It could probably use a couple of extra MOSFETs, and maybe the chipset itself doesn't like to handle it, but it can reach right around 4.1 gigahertz if I really push it, but uh, I really don't like to. I want to get some longevity out of this test bench, so we're going to keep it right around 4.02 to 4.03. That should be adequate for basically every card that we're going to test in here. And as you can see, it is a four core, eight threaded processor on the 1156 LGA socket. Right now we are running a V-Core of around 1.32, which is about as high as I want to push it on this particular motherboard. The chip itself can go quite a bit higher. Well, maybe not quite a bit higher, but you can get it to around 1.4, 1.45 if you're willing to endanger your chip a little bit. And this particular processor, people can get it up to around 4.7, but not on this motherboard. Anyhow, 
This test bench should be adequate for basically everything we're going to test on this particular channel. And if I ever do need to upgrade, I probably will. So I just have to say thank you folks for all of your questions. Thank you for bearing with me. If you have any other questions about the test bench or anything in general, feel free to leave it in the comments section. I will do my best to answer all of them. So thank you folks for watching and I will see you guys next time.